In this video, I'm discussing the third season episode, Carnival, from the Superboy TV series. This time a young Superman faces the ultimate evil, and superpowers aren't enough by a long shot to win this battle. He's in a fight against temptation and everything is at stake, or he and Lana Lang may be doomed. At this point in the series, the setting shifted from Schuster University to the Bureau for Extra Normal Matters in Capital City, Florida, where Clark and Lana were interns and investigated paranormal activities, kind of like reporter versions of Mulder and Scully. In this episode, ordinary citizens are disappearing off the face of the earth after succumbing to some kind of sinful temptation. The episode feels as if Superboy was taken over by Rod Serling. It's not quite up to Twilight Zone level writing, but it feels like the kind of fantastical morality play Rod Serling might have dreamed up. Superboy? We begin with a man who's taken his family to a carnival. He picks up a wallet lying on the ground and takes out the money, only to disappear later on thanks to a mysterious and very evil man, or should I say, being, named DeVille. Of course, Lana Lang is interested. On this show, she basically fills in for Lois Lane, investigating and getting into trouble. Next, we switch to a hot pursuit in progress as a young Superman saves a kidnapped woman from a thug named Samuels, played by Greg Allman of the Allman Brothers Band. What? So you're going to jail? Jail? That's a joke. She wasn't the first, and she won't be the last. You can't do anything, can you, but stand there and look stupid? He does a pretty good job of playing a bad guy. Superboy almost succumbs to the temptation of battering this criminal after Samuel's rants about attacking women while the court system lets him out again and again. Superboy wants to beat him up, but he controls his temper even as Samuel's taunts Superboy while being hauled away by the police. I'll see you again, superhero. Lana confronts DeVille. They have an enlightening conversation that reveals his true identity. But some people are curious. They want to bite the apple. He tells her of the biblical story of the Garden of Eden, and that he believes that when Eve ate the apple out of curiosity, that paradise was not lost, but a whole new world opened up. But I think a whole new world opened up. Of course, being the devil, he forgot to mention all the death, destruction, and misery that was part of that new world. Similar to Eve's temptation, he offered Lana knowledge of secrets yet unrevealed. But you have to be willing to look for yourself. I can't force you. It has to come from within. In Genesis 3-5, Eve was told that if she ate the apple, her eyes would be opened and she and Adam would be as gods, knowing good and evil. Come look. Meanwhile, Clark's wandering the carnival and finds himself getting tempted to dunk a dwarf. But he refuses. You probably froze like a girl. Uh-oh. Come on. Shut me up. No. You're just doing your job. Of course, the thing that Clark forgets is that if nobody dunks the dwarf, the dwarf will be out of a job. Next, Clark is tempted by a fortune teller, which is another sin forbidden many times in the Bible. She offers him knowledge, which seems similar to Eve's temptation and Lana's, which you might be tempted to ask what's wrong with that, but in this case, I believe Superboy was being tested as to whether or not he would put his own interest above that of others that need his help at the moment. Do you know where you're from? Why you're here? During this time, Lana has wandered into the lair of DeVille, and Clark hears her scream for help, prompting him to change into Superboy, of course. I said there'd be another one, and now there is. You should've killed me when you had the chance. There are plenty of chances left. Now Superboy faces the biggest temptation of all. Samuels has Lana by the throat. Can Superboy control his anger enough to save Lana without killing Samuels? Is this it? You gonna finish it? You deserve it. Do it! Kill me! Do it! It looks like Superboy is going to break his vow and kill this murderous thug while Lana lays helpless in the corner, unconscious. It's not my style. Seemingly, Superboy has beaten the last temptation. At this point, DeVille says, You almost killed! So Superboy admits he came close to actually killing. 
Well, it seems that Deville, or the De Devil, has been defeated. And all should be okay. You beat him. He wanted to take your soul, but he, he couldn't tempt you. And this is where most of us would say, yeah, of course. I got lucky. No, 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 it wasn't luck. Well, I mean, you know how it is. You should give yourself more credit. And if it were me, I'd probably say something like, oh, of course, you're absolutely right. Say you're proud for once. Now, I don't know about y'all, but she's starting to freak me out a little bit. You know, I think Superboy's starting to get a little freaked out, too. You really want me to say that, don't you? You gotta take pride. Now, if you ever went to Sunday school and you are a kid, there should be some warning bells going off in your head about now. But pride's a sin. Now, I just have to say, he was pretty slick on this one. You're smart! Now, you see, the devil doesn't quit. At this point, I'd have screwed up and said, well, yeah, I'm smarter than you, and don't you forget it. <laughs> As Deville, or the devil, disappears, we see Superboy and Lana alone in the field, where the carnival once stood. Strangely, though, all the people are gone as if they were all just inventions of Deville. At this point, I would have really loved to see Rod Serling pop up and do an ending epilogue. I picked this episode to review for a couple of reasons. One, I just happened to be watching it as I was going through the Superboy series again. And two, it's interesting in the fact that it's kind of a rarity. It's an interesting angle. I mean, in this episode, they deal with Christian themes, along with Superman dealing with criminals who have no rules while he fights to stay true to his own moral code. Christian themes today, anyway, uh, can get in get you in the hot water from both sides. I mean, there's those that will hate on anything related to Christianity, and those in Christian circles that will pick it apart for not being Christian enough or biblical enough. I mean, that's understandable, but you could pick apart Pilgrim's Progress or the Chronicles of Narnia if you had the time, I'm sure. Like, what about having that witch in, uh, in a Christian story in the Chronicles of Narnia? I mean, that's just an example. I'm not saying it's bad or, or good. I'm just, just giving an example. It's not nearly as hard to find conservative values or Christian themes in older TV shows. The farther you go back, the more you run into it. I remember one of my favorite Rifleman episodes was one where Lucas McCain's house was burned down by a bunch of bad guys. And he tells his son Mark the story of Job and how he lost everything. Looks to me like the Lord's dead set against us having our own place. He never lost his faith in God. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand beside me later on. And then there's the Twilight Zone episode, The Obsolete Man, where Burgess Meredith represents the free-thinking man who actually reads the Bible while opposing the all-knowing state that wants to wipe independent dot off the face of the earth. I don't get in politics or even religious matters much in my videos, but if it comes up, it comes up, I guess. It kind of feels like we're living in the Twilight Zone, uh, in that Twilight Zone episode, The Obsolete Man, right now. It has patterned itself after every dictator who has ever planted the ripping imprint of a boot on the pages of history. It has refinements, technological advances, and a more sophisticated approach to the destruction of human freedom. It has one iron rule. Logic is an enemy and truth is a menace. Any state, any entity, any ideology that fails to recognize the worth, the dignity, the rights of man, that state is obsolete. Well, that's all I got to say about that topic, but uh, I think I should do a video on the obsolete man someday. It really does have a lot of depth to it. The heart of this episode revolves around Superboy's, or young Superman's, vow to never take a human life in his war against injustice. I recently did another video on the subject and how it was dealt with on the Adventures of Superman episode, The Stolen Costume. Superman fans have argued for decades as to whether Superman murdered two criminals just to save his secret identity or not in that episode. I lay out the facts of the case and the story so you can be the judge. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. On a trivia note, the Superboy series ran from 1988 to 1992. Of course, Gerard Christopher played Superboy. He was the second to do so, starting with Season 2. Stacy Haduck played Lana Lang. Christopher Neem played the Ville. From what I gather, he also played a lot of bad guys, including one supernatural villain that took on Chuck Norris. 
Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave your comments, uh, hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Do a lot of classic TV superhero stuff and a lot of classic TV shows in general. Thanks for watching and have a great day.